you feel an ecstatic sense within you simply because of the union within yourself, not because of what somebody else is doing. So now in a marriage, what somebody else is doing or you, what your husband or wife is doing doesn't matter, just the way you are is an explosive experience. This is how lot of women lived in the past because the process was very scientific and it was done properly. So they put this metal on the toes and also on the ring finger always because if there is metal on certain strategic places in your body, you will not accidentally leave your body. So when you do spiritual sadhana, when we notice somebody is becoming very intense, first thing is I will give them a simple copper ring which they must wear and they cannot remove without you also. <laughs> they must wear and they cannot remove without permission because if this simple metal is on the ring finger, when they get into certain states of exuberance, by accident they will not slip out of the body. So she got into such exuberant states. Naturally certain little bit of jewelry things were there. These things were never discussed till that point. The many things I refuse to discuss because devices will work well only when people do not know how it works. So we just put it on people, we never explain. But when this situation happened, I had to explain what happened. She sat there on a full moon day evening with everybody. There were people around and after five minutes, it is in the shrine, she got up and went. My eyes are closed, I knew she got up. I got a little irritated because nobody ever gets up once they sit down. Till we say it is time, nobody ever gets up. And of all the people, my wife getting up and going, little irritation in me, one… Why… why is she getting up of all the people? Then I ignored it and I sat down. After five minutes, she came and sat down. In another seven, eight minutes, she just went like that. When I looked, she was gone with a… with a big smile on her face. Then I looked, she has removed her nose ring, she has removed her bangles, she removed her toe, toe rings. See, she did not know intellectually, but at that moment she felt this is what is stopping her. And she pulled out all those things, kept next to the… next to the wash basin and came back. And she sat down within seven, eight minutes. But this is not something that happened accidentally. She announced this almost nine months ahead of time. She had prepared my girl who was only seven years at that time, uh, that she is going to leave in this month, but it happened one month early for various reasons, so that's a different aspect. But this is not new in this country. Any number of yogis just sit down, announce to everybody and leave their body. This whole process started one year before that. One year before that, there was a yogi called Nirmalananda in the Biligiri Rangana Betta in Karnataka. Anybody been there? B.R. Hills, you been there? Yeah. Oh, it's a fabulous place. So he lived there. For fourteen years he lived in silence, just in the four-acre ashram, he never stepped out of it. I… I met him in a strange way. I used to trek in those mountains. So I go alone and trek for a week, ten days when I run out of food and there's no way I can procure anything. I live out of the forest, but when I'm done, I come out and ride off. I park my motorcycle somewhere, I trekked for almost five, six days. From it is rainy season, head to toe, I am in slush, okay? I am really drenched with mud and everything. Then I came out and I was extremely hungry, I had not eaten for two days. I was very, very hungry. So there is no hotels, nothing there. So I had heard about this ashram. Me and spirituality were impossible at those times, that never occurred to me, I was just, you know, in a different mode altogether. So I, I went to this ashram, there were about fifteen steps to climb. I wouldn't get off my motorcycle at all those days, I just rode up the steps and went and parked my motorcycle, leaning it onto the door… wall next to his door and he came and he looked at me and he grinned. Then I said, I'm hungry but he was not talking, so he said, come inside and he made me sit down. He had a little, you know, baking thing, he baked some bread for me. All he had was this bread and honey. So he gave me bread and honey, I ate up two loaves of bread for making up for two days. Then after that, we developed a silent relationship. 
Whenever I went there, I would take a bunch of bananas or something and he would give me a can of honey. This transaction went on. Many years later, after things happened to me in a big way, everything about my life changed. After about ten years, I went to see him. He didn't recognize me because you know <laughs> And uh, I asked, don't you recognize me? And I smiled. He said, mm. <laughs> he said, oh, you are the guy on the motorcycle <laughs> So at the age of seventy-three, he decided when Uttarayana comes, you know what's Uttarayana? The sun's relationship with the earth, when it moves from southern hemisphere to north, you heard of Bhishma waiting to die at that time. Mm. So he said, when Uttarayana comes, I want to leave my body. I went there with my wife and daughter and uh, then he cried and he said, I have built a samadhi, I am doing all this, but I am afraid that I may not be able to do it. Then I started discussing the technicalities of what it is, what makes it happen, what stops it, what is it that you need to do and these kind of things. So, my wife Viji was also there, she was listening to all this. Then we were driving back. By then I had graduated to four wheels and we were driving back. Then she was silently crying. I said, what happened? She said, I also want to leave like him. I said, when are you going to go? <laughs> I was trying to make a joke out of it. She said, no, I really… this is what I want to do. I said, why? What's wrong with your life? She said, no, everything is right with my life. My outside is good, my inside is feeling wonderful. I want to leave when I'm like this, not when something is wrong with me. Then, you know, as a husband, as a father of the girl, I'm trying to discourage her. But as a guru, definitely I want somebody to go as far as they can go. So from that day she started, as she asked for what to do, I gave her some simple sadhana, never believing that she will go to that pitch and intensity. Because she was not somebody who was steeped in spiritual sadhana. She is just a very alive, she is either up or down, you know. She is either absolutely exuberant or down. She doesn't know the in-between. <laughs> She is not somebody who would, whom you would consider a yogi or established in sadhana, nothing like that. She is a very exuberant person and that's all it takes, that you're alive, that's all it takes. It's not that you know this or that, you're just hundred percent alive, that's the only qualification you need. And she started working towards it, she announced it nine months ahead, we tried to sabotage it in so many ways to slow it down, but it went the way it went. Yes, please. We'll take two more questions and then I think… Yes, ma'am. Uh, mic for the lady, please. Oh, are, are. First course of Isha Yoga, uh, I'm having difficulty in cutting the cord. Please cut, help me with cutting that. The? Cutting She's the having cord. difficulty in cutting the cord. With my attachment to my family, to oh. my children, I get very easily disturbed by what happens within my close circle. Please help me with that. Oh, I never said you must cut the cord. <laughs> <laughs> I… I'm just telling you, unfortunately, your motherly cord is too limited right now. Just expand it a little bit. Just make it connect to every piece of life on this planet, rather than just to a handful. Beautiful. Why do you want to cut your cord? Where is the reason to cut your cord? The reason why… See, please understand this, there is a difference between involvement and entanglement. If you do not know involvement, you will never know life. The only way to know life is with involvement. If you are not involved, would you know anything? Forget about spirituality. Would you know anything in your life if you are not involved? The only way to know anything in your life is with involvement. What is lacking in people is lack of involvement. So, 
when involvement becomes discriminatory, it becomes entanglement. Let your involvement become indiscriminate. The earth that you walk upon, the food that you eat, the water that you drink, the air that you breathe and the very space in which you exist. See if you can absolutely involve yourself with everything because the life that you are, you are involved. If you are not involved with the air that you breathe, you would be dead, isn't it? You are anyway involved. You just have to become conscious that this is the only way life happens. You have to see that you are consciously involved. Right now you are unconsciously involved. If you are unconsciously involved, it looks like one big burden. If you are consciously involved, it will become blissful. Is your life right now? Do you know scientifically today we can prove every subatomic particle in your body is right now in communication with the whole cosmos. Such a big phenomena, you are trying to ignore, that is your crime. You are bearing your children, being married, that is not your crime. Your crime is you're trying to ignore such a big phenomena which is the basis of your life and creation. Because you ignore that, you suffer. Not because you're involved with your family, you suffer. Because you're trying to ignore something so big. Right now your life is like this. Is it true that today sun came up on time for the season? Yes? Planet is spinning, spinning on time, flowers blossom. Everything in these many, many galaxies is happening absolutely perfectly well. But you have one nasty thought crawling through your head and it's a bad day. Mm. You have… you don't have a perspective of who you are. You think too much of yourself. If you… see right now your whole experience of life is limited to the physical form that you are. As a physical form, what are you in this cosmos, tell me? In your home you may be something, on the street not much, in the town nothing, in the cosmos you are not even a speck of dust. Please get the perspective right. As a physical existence, you are really nothing, isn't it? If you understand this, you would know, you would look at everything with absolute wonder and involvement, then one little thought, one little emotion that is flowing through your mind wouldn't be important because it's not even a concern. It is something that you are creating, isn't it? What's happening in your mind is your making. Yes or no? Can I tell you a bad joke? <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anas. Can we have the last question now? Okay. A joke. Okay, I'm so sorry. Ho sakta mujhe maaf kar dena. A lady went to sleep. A lady? A lady went to sleep. Mm. In her sleep, she had a dream. In her dream, she saw a hunk of a man standing there, staring at her. He started coming closer and closer and closer and closer. He came so close, she could even feel his breath and she trembled not in fear. <laughs> and then she asked, what will you do to me? The man said, well lady, it's your dream <laughs> So, what's… what is happening in your head is your bloody <laughs> dream, isn't it? Now your problem is not that life is not happening the way you want it, even your bloody dream is not happening the way you want it. <laughs> this is your problem. At least let the dreams happen the way you want it. The world doesn't happen the way you want it, that's different. If your dream happened the way you want it, you would be still joyful, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I hope you got your answer, ma'am. Yes, hello? Up there, yes, I think, oh, yes, ma'am. In the other world, yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, please speak up, it's okay. Yes, yes, we'll try and. Your basic question is what is awareness? That you are up there. Uh, we, 
I think that lady asked a question, what is awareness? Let Sadhguru answer that. Is it related to that kind of a question? No. Okay, then I think let so, Sadhguru uh, answer that. That no is very firm, I yes. understand that. <laughs> I have no. somehow, I somehow feel what is your question going to be? <laughs> okay, what is awareness Sadhguru? Aliveness is awareness. You know that you are alive only because you are aware. Only thing is, right now your awareness is very limited, it's in low voltage. You just have to pump it up. You just have to increase the pitch of the voltage, that's all. It's not that you're not aware. Only because you're aware you know that you're here, otherwise you wouldn't even know. Suppose, is there anybody sleeping in the dark corners? <laughs> Suppose somebody's gone like this, he doesn't even know where he is, isn't it? Not only th he does not know where he is, he does not even know whether he is or he isn't. <laughs> isn't it? So you are aware, that's why you know you are here, that's why you know you are. But now it is not strong enough, it is not lighting up the whole space, it is only lighting one corner of your life. It is giving you enough awareness to survive in the world, it is not giving you enough awareness to know the nature of life. Now when we say awareness, awareness, we are talking about only heightening your awareness, not creating some new awareness. Your awareness is good enough for survival. Is that enough for you? Or do you want to know the very nature of your existence? If you want to know the very nature of your existence, then you need to pitch up your awareness to a higher level, otherwise it will not happen. Please, this. Yes. Uh, the lady with the, with the no. We have all eyes for you now. You. What's your name? Mrinalini. Why don't you shoot at him? There's a photograph near the samadhi of your wife mm -hmm. which sent, she was, you know… Uh, the, the, the feeling that was captured in the photograph… Whose photograph is that? Okay. See, every life that is here is capable of joy, is capable of blissfulness, is capable of ecstasy. The only problem is they are not able to sustain it. The problem is of sustainability. Everybody knows moments of all this. But to be there, to be there, you have not built the necessary foundations. See, if there is a wall, you can jump up and have a peep or you can go on a trampoline and have a little longer peep but you'll come down. But if you build a ladder which is not so romantic as jumping but if you climb up, you're across the wall. So instead of calling it by different names like blissfulness, ecstasy, this, that, pleasantness, highest level of pleasantness, this is what every human being wants. If your body is pleasant, we say it is health. If it becomes very pleasant, we say it's pleasure. If your mind is pleasant, we say this is peace. If it becomes very pleasant, we say this is joy. If your emotions are pleasant, we say this is love. If it becomes very pleasant, we say it's compassion. If your very life energies are pleasant, we say this is bliss. If it is very pleasant, we say this is ecstasy. 
If your surroundings have become pleasant, we say you are a success. This is all every human being is seeking, isn't it? Nothing more. You want your insides pleasant, you want your outsides pleasant. This is all a human being is seeking. Outside pleasantness, you need people's cooperation. Yes? It is a craft. You have to arrange, you have to compromise, you have to deal with situations properly. Out creating outside pleasantness is a certain talent, a certain capability. Not everybody is able to do the same thing on the outside. But when it comes to interiority, all of us are equally capable. Nobody has come better endowed than the other. Every human being is capable of the same thing in the inward dimension. So, somebody is sitting in a state of ecstasy, how to get there, is it possible for me? Don't even ask the question, is it possible? If it is possible for me, it is for sure possible for you. But what I do on the outside, is it possible for you? Maybe, may not be. But what I do on the inside, is it possible for me? Definitely, definitely possible. Inner experience, nobody can be denied. External capabilities are different. So, what needs to be done? Whatever you've been through, the inner engineering is the fundamental. You… if you get this one thing right, you will naturally grow into that. The problem is, every day you keep undoing it, do you understand? So every day in the morning you do this, now we're giving the Isha Kriya CD also all over Mumbai, but every day in the morning you give yourself a three-minute crash course in inner engineering. You will see, in three months' time you will be feeling very pleasant, in six months' time if you simply look at a tree, you will burst into ecstasy. If you look at a cloud, you will burn burst into ecstasy. If you close your eyes, you will get there. No matter what, you just need an excuse, you will become like that, for sure. Because these are the fundamentals. That is… that's why I am saying it's engineering, because if you want to engineer something, you have to do it right, otherwise it will not work. You can't somehow… see, you want to build this building, you can't somehow place something and hope it will stand. It will not stand. You have to place it in a certain way, then only the building stands up, isn't it? Similarly, you have to hold yourself in a certain way, then only this experience holds up. Otherwise, moments up and then down. Also, I feel, uh, with your permission, I think if you uh, depend on others to make you happy, I think there's a possibility you may not be happy. If you decide that you need to decide to be happy, then why, there is a why possibility… Why are you underestimating her husband? Okay <laughs> I think it's a… I have to… we have to stop, Sadhguru, uh, shall we… Just five minutes more. Five minutes, okay. There's a time given to me, that's why. Good evening, all of you, and my pronouns to Guruji and anu Anupamji. I'm Vijay Shankar. I'm from the media and also a classical dancer. So, Guruji, I would like to know, you know, man is always craving for more and more and not happy at all with whatever he gets. Of course, you just explained now how happiness is an internal state of being. So normally, how, what would you tell to normal people as to how to get peace and happiness in their lives? <laughs> the problem is not that human beings are craving for more, they are craving too little. Right now, instead of… when human consciousness is able to grasp the whole cosmos, instead of craving for that, they are craving for an apartment in Mumbai. Just <laughs> stupid <laughs> So their suffering is not because they are craving for more, they are craving for too little. They conjuice even in their craving, <laughs> that is their problem. Please crave for everything, you will be wonderful, there will be no misery. You are craving for little things, that's your problem. When such a big possibility is there, going for this is very… it's criminal I would say. So it is because of this crime they are suffering, they are being punished for this crime, not for craving too much, they are not craving enough. When creation and creator is possible, 
they just want this little piece of property, that's all they're thinking of, they can't think beyond that, so they suffer for limiting themselves, not because of craving for too much. One last question we'll take, Sadhguru. <laughs> That's a burning question. Okay. <laughs> Sadhguru, uh, I, I'm, I have deep gratitude towards you. I've uh, read an article about you uh, from you on in Times of India, uh, you know, and I was really amazed. And that led to, uh, you know, a lot of strong feeling. I just can't imagine. I still have that feeling. So that 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 connection is with you. So, I have been, since childhood, I have been ignored a lot of times. I feel I have been uh, manipulated, you know. So, I'm not able to understand, uh, you know, understand uh, what is happening actually. You know, I always go through these things every now and then. Okay. So, if you've been ignored by everybody around you, it's a fortune. You have life for yourself. <laughs> Most children are suffering the attention of the parents. If they're ignored, they would be just happy doing their own thing. <laughs> so, you… you just… you just sit there and listen to me. Immediately the question is, what is the prayer? It's not a prayer. There is… you need to understand there are no prayers in this culture. They're only invocations. Prayers are a recent happening. Prayer means you're trying to talk to somebody. Invocation means you're trying to bring out what is the greatest thing within you. Now, what this chant, to put it uh, in a simplest form is, everything, the earth that I walk upon, the air that I breathe, the water that I drink, the food that I eat, the very space in which we exist, the hand thing that you can do is to be absolutely involved with this but still not distort the hand of the creation. You do not distort the hand of you do is an aberration to what the creator intends. The intelligence behind creation, what is intending, what it is intending, to be in tune with that, not to do some rubbish of your own thing. So, this is a journey from being a piece of creation to being the creator. Every human being is capable of this. It's my wish and my blessing. This should become the reality in your life. Thank you very much for being here.